Colombia is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world, with lush forests covering over half its territory. In their peace deal signed in 2016, the government and the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, or FARC, vote to help protect the country's natural riches. But tree loss has increased since the agreement, and it is unlikely that the nation will achieve its goal of stopping deforestation by 2030. This means that it could also lose out on aid tied to green policies. Meanwhile, the loss of tropical forests contributes to rising greenhouse gas emissions worldwide, and it makes Colombia more vulnerable to climate change. The destruction sped up in 2015, and in 2017 alone, forest clearance reached almost 225,000 hectares, about 2.6% of the world's total deforestation. In 2020, the country lost another 170,000 hectares of vegetation, an area twice the size of New York City. So what happened in 2015? The previous year, the FARC declared a ceasefire as part of efforts to end over five decades of war. FARC guerrillas in Colombia have begun their first indefinite ceasefire. Historically, the FARC's relationship with the environment was complex. The group exploited the forests, but they also limited how much jungle could be cut down. However, in the run-up to peace, they relaxed these controls. In their absence, other illegal armed groups took over. Groups who allowed an increase in coca farming, mining, logging, and the business behind most deforestation in the country, cattle ranching. Victims of the war are responsible for some of the tree clearing too. Thousands of families who were forced to abandon their homes had to find new places to live, new ways to feed themselves, and they often took land from the jungle to do so. We went to the department of Caquetá in the southwest of Colombia to talk to some subsistence farmers and see how deforestation is fueling new cycles of violence. We just landed in Florencia, Caquetá, uh, after a flight straight from Bogota, Colombia's capital. In the Caquetá department, we see deforestation as never before. Especially since the peace agreements from the year 2016, we see that the deforestation rates skyrocketed. This is a department that has presence of FARC dissidents, multiple groups, and also some smaller paramilitary forces. All right, that's us. Desde la cabecera del municipio uh -huh. hasta la final del municipio. Uh -huh. Al lado y lado. Cartagena lo divide este famoso río que es el río Caguán. Uh -huh. Cuando estaban, por ejemplo, las FARC en los territorios, uh -huh. antes del proceso de paz, ellos ejercían control. Uh -huh. Que hay que, cuántas hectáreas va a tumbar tal campesino, y ellos controlaban la, las grandes extensiones. Después de, de, los, de que se vinieron las FARC, Eh, fue donde se disparó la deforestación porque no había control. O sea, uno de los factores para haber mucha deforestación en Cartagena ha sido la implementación de la ganadería extensiva. Y, y una pregunta, ¿y si hay un reemplazo eh, donde los campesinos cambian la coca por la ganadería, ¿debe haber que la ganadería también eh, causa algún beneficio para el grupo armado que está en la zona? ¿no? El grupo armado que es más dominante acá, ¿ellos cómo se lucran a través del modelo ganadero? Para nadie es un secreto que en las zonas existen o sea, el, el, el pago por una, una red, que 
les cobran a las personas que tienen harto ganado, o les cobran por tener una, una cabeza de ganado anualmente. From the capital of the department, Florencia, we traveled to Cartagena del Chaira, the municipality with the highest rate of deforestation in Colombia, to see the problem firsthand and explore its link with conflict and crime. There, we saw how cattle ranching has slowly replaced the fields of coca. If you look over there, you might actually not suspect that we're in the middle of the Amazon looking at all the green grasslands, but this is the result of years and decades of deforestation. Ya estamos entrando a la reserva forestal. Sí, sí. Ya estamos. Ya aquí para entrar. Buenas. Buenas. Señor. la madera. From this little hamlet, which is called El Recreo Alto, it's the border where we actually enter the forest reserve. Meaning that from this point then on, cattle ranching is illegal, but as far as I can see, the landscape doesn't change and the first cars are there already. We're in the middle of Cartagena del Chaira, which is one of the areas most affected by conflict in Colombia. We see a lot of deforestation, um, which actually increased after the signing of the peace agreements, which on one hand has to do with the form of FARC that controlled the whole area in Cartagena del Chaira, and basically uh, instructed farmers not to deforest or to restrict the logging of forest because the FARC needed forest cover to set up camps to move fighters around. But since they've gone, the state hasn't stepped in to function as an actor that safeguards the forest and works on natural conservation. We actually see that a new non-state armed group moved into the area with a different perspective towards conservation and deforestation. This is why farmers are allowed to work on grasslands, logging Amazon forests to put cattle in these areas, generating great revenues, not only for uh, the investors behind all these big cattle ranching projects, but also generating revenues for non-state armed groups that tax all these cattle ranching operations, the timber trade, and basically every economic endeavor in this area now. Many of the families we spoke to said that the government, which had encouraged them to destroy their coca crops, had not fulfilled promises to support alternative sources of income. Tired of waiting, they needed to find an alternative. But with roads like this, it's difficult to transport perishable crops to market, which makes cattle ranching such an attractive option. Aquí en el municipio de Cartagena del Chaira vemos que la deforestación aumentó mucho después de la firma de paz. ¿Usted puede explicar por qué aumentó tan drásticamente la deforestación? Eh, esto se dio por incumplimiento del Estado de los acuerdos que se hicieron. ¿sí? Eh, la erradicación de, de los cultivos ilícitos, eso fue un lógico. Aquí en esta región la coca se arrancó por voluntad de los campesinos, se hicieron unos compromisos al cual que no, no se cumplieron. Entonces, ¿la gente qué hizo? Le miraron la posibilidad de que por allá tenían una alternativa. ¿sí? Los pocos que teníamos ya el pedacito de tierra, pues ahí nos hemos sostenido. Pero los que no tenían nada, los que trabajaban moleando machetes, limpiando los cultivos, los que humigaban, los que raspaban, esa gente fue la que emigró a buscar un futuro por allá, en, en, más adelante, más en la selva, que, que hay vida. Y hay, hay mucha economía porque hay, hay, desde siembra comida pues hay, 
hay vida, hay comida para salir adelante. Somos delincuentes, nosotros lo que somos gente trabajadora y humilde que queremos salir adelante. Vamos a esperar que llegue el barco. ¡Listo, jálese, jálese! ¡Jálese! Right now we're on the Caguan River, and as you can see, the wood floating over here, this is a transport route for timber, which can be legally or illegally logged. For example, on the other side of the river, there's a point where the timber is gathered. I just had a talk with the guy from the shop that's cutting the timber and building furniture. He's saying that each two or three months, they receive 600, 700 parts of timber. For each piece of timber that they receive, they need to pay taxes or, as they say, vacuna or a vaccine to the guerrilla. So this is the way you can see actually that the guerrilla is not only involved in illicit crops, charging, extortion fees for cattle ranching, but even smaller activities such as uh, the trade in timber. They try to move into these um, niche sectors and earn some money basically for the maintenance of their own fronts. ¿Cuántas hectáreas al día pueden tumbar? Yo me tumbo para ir tres hectáreas. Tres hectáreas hmm, día. en el día. Con una máquina esta. Tiene que pagar una, una, una cuota, un pago, una vacuna sí, a claro. la guerrilla en esta región. Sí, claro. No todo el mundo, para que nadie es un secreto que, que todo el mundo le aporta. En, mm. en casi todo el mundo en Cartagena, en todo el mundo en este municipio, en el país le, le aporta esa gente. Mm. Subsistence farmers and loggers are caught in the middle. On the one hand, they face extortion and threats from guerrilla groups. On the other, they claim to be victimized by the government, especially since this moment. Hace pocos días concebimos, planeamos y le dimos vida a una campaña que se conoce como campaña Artemisa. Se se han controlado más de 10.743 hectáreas de acción, como es en el área de Cartagena de Chairá y San Vicente del Caguán. Es una campaña que busca enfrentar el crimen de la deforestación que ha venido afectando a nuestro país. Operation Artemisa is a military push intended to halt the indiscriminate cutting of trees in Colombia. It involves 22,000 officers and has, so far, led to the arrest of 94 people and helped protect over 20,000 hectares of national parks, according to police sources. However, there are critics, and they say the campaign focuses too much on low-level farmers and should target the powerful people running illicit businesses instead. Local farmer Hyber is one of those claiming unfair persecution. Eh, sí, soy campesino, tengo finca, no propiedad. Aparecemos en, en un panfleto que de los deforestadores del sur del país y que ofrecen una recompensa de 20 millones de pesos por nosotros por el tema de deforestación. Nosotros, desde luego que la mayoría que estamos en ese panfleto somos gente que no tenemos nada que ver con ese tema. Hay personas que tienen 15 hectáreas, de esas hay personas que tienen 20 hectáreas. Entonces nosotros consideramos que esa no es una estrategia del Estado para terminar con el tema de la deforestación. Es más bien una estrategia de, de molestar y de perturbar al campesino eh, en la búsqueda de desalojo del territorio o, o por el incumplimiento que tiene el Estado frente a las responsabilidades que tiene con nosotros los campesinos. Porque si nosotros miramos de fondo eh, la gente que en realidad ha deforestado en el departamento, que son pocas familias, que tienen la mayor parte de tierra, pues a ellos no les han hecho ningún tipo de investigación. Y, y hasta la fecha no conocemos que, que se haya adelantado un proceso en contra de esas familias. 
Entonces lo están haciendo en contra de nosotros, que somos los que menos tenemos que ver con ese tema. Tonight we are in a, in a very small hamlet next to a river. Um, this area is called Nuevo Horizonte, New Horizon. And we actually arrived after a very long day. Let's say we traveled about eight hours over the most um, makeshift roads, uh, bridges, all built by the community itself to penetrate deeply in the municipality of Cartagena del Chayra. All that we've seen today basically is deforested areas of Amazon lands. Um, we've seen huge green savannas, but actually we know that this is a part of the Amazon forest, only the forest is not really there anymore, because we are in the middle of the result of years of deforestation, especially for cattle ranching. We've been speaking with uh, local farmers who also are sleeping in this, this makeshift camp. They are traveling to go to a manifestation in the capital city of the department Caquetá, Florencia. And all these farmers want to gather basically to voice their concerns, not only about the deforestation in which they are complicit, but especially about the very strong state response with militarization, arrests of uh, poor farmers, without coming up with actual solutions. And the state needs to come up with solutions because they promised to implement the peace agreements uh, signed in the year 2016. The next day we headed to the urban center of the municipality to catch up with the farmers at a planning meeting before the demonstration. Lo que estamos buscando es que el gobierno nacional, pues en este caso por medio del Congreso, entonces nos escuchen, nos escuchen porque el gobierno nos está echando la culpa a nosotros de una problemática de deforestación que se está presentando en el sur del país. El municipio de Cartagena de Chayra, la economía predominante es la ganadería. Aquí la agricultura es muy difícil, pues usted pudo darse cuenta hoy cómo están las vías. Entonces cuesta mucho sacar la agricultura. Entonces eso hace que toda la gente opte por la ganadería. Y entonces el que va hacia la montaña virgen lleva en su pensamiento es tumbar montaña para poder meter ganadería. Y ahí es donde debe estar el Estado diciéndole, esa no es la forma de producir. Nosotros estamos convencidos de que somos capaces de convivir con la naturaleza, producir protegiendo el medio ambiente. ¿sí? Le estamos pidiendo al Estado que antes de aplicar eh, la represión como alternativa para asumir el problema ambiental, es sentarse con el campesino, ¿sí? hablar con él y desarrollar políticas que permitan que esas familias se conviertan en protectoras del medio ambiente en esta región. We're 
in the city of Florencia. We are here with a few hundred uh, former leaders, campesinos, who are actually protesting the government because they face, for, face a lot of criminalization. What happens is that the state is going after the small farmers who are most certainly logging and contributing to deforestation. But it's not the small farmers without a lot of financial capital that are responsible for this. There are a very few very rich large landowners, oftentimes uh, managing funds they acquired through drug trafficking, that are responsible for the biggest numbers of deforestation in this region. But what we see is that the small farmers are receiving the, the stick from the state and most pressure from law enforcement authorities that responsibilize them for deforestation. And they actually try to defend themselves by saying that they're just impoverished farmers living in an area forgotten by the state that's actually ruled by non-state armed groups and large landowners causing most of the deforestation. The plight of conflict victims was at the heart of Colombia's peace deal, and addressing their needs could give them, finally, the means to survive without having to destroy nature reserves. In Colombia, deforestation is rooted in inequality and the failure to tackle it. Corruption is also a major problem, and it plagues the management of natural resources and initiatives like Artemisa. Crisis Group believes that the government should investigate claims that the biggest environmental offenders evade justice through bribery and threats. Recent efforts, like a new law setting out higher sentences for those financing the destruction of the forests, are a step in the right direction. But they should be effectively enforced. And regulated cattle ranching, logging and coca farming not only fuel deforestation and lead to natural disasters and droughts, they also feed crime and finance armed groups. Protecting the environment will require renewed commitment and resources, and it is vital to allow Colombia, and particularly areas like Aquetá, to live in peace and flourish. <laughs>